Hello, I'm Beth Green, and I'm running for president. Well, maybe I'm not exactly running for president, but I ought to be running for president because when I see some of these bozos who are running for president, I think, oh my God, somebody's got to say something. Now, you're not going to like what I say. A lot of you aren't going to like what I say. But I'm going to tell you the truth, and I'm going to tell you straight. And I'm going to talk about one thing in this video. There's a lot of things to talk about, but I'm going to talk about one thing, and it's about who's got your money, white people. Now, I'm white. Notwithstanding the fact that I have curly hair, I am white. I was born white. I've remained white. Now, why is this important? Because I'm really addressing this video to white people, to the white people who are getting on the bandwagon with people like Donald Trump, and you think you're getting power by associating with him. And this is a big mistake. Now, Donald Trump is counting on you being miserable, angry, and wanting help, really desperately wanting help. And there's a lot of people out there who are miserable and who want help and who need and deserve help. But what he is offering is a bunch of bullshit. And what I'm going to be offering you is some facts so that you can make up your own mind. I have seen this before. It's called divide and conquer. Now, let me tell you something. Number one, the reality is who has your money is not the black people, is not the Mexican immigrants, is not the Syrians, is not the whatever. It's the wealthy corporations and mostly white billionaires in this country, and Donald Trump is one of them. Believe me, he's not giving his money or his power away. He's using you. Now, you may not like hearing this, but I want you to listen. Just give me a few minutes, and you can throw the tomatoes afterwards. Let me just give you a few facts. One of these comes from this thing called Forbes magazine. You may not read Forbes magazine. I don't read Forbes magazine. Forbes magazine is for people with money. Uh, it's about money, it's about investing, and it's about business. So this is not a radical communist conspiracy magazine, is what I'm trying to tell you. You know what they say? Income inequality between blacks and whites has increased since the 1960s. Are you hearing me? Income inequality between blacks and whites has increased since the 1960s. See, I was around in the 1960s. I'm a, a, an old lady. I mean, I'm 70, going on 71. And I remember the Voting Rights Act. And I'm going to tell you what happened. After blacks finally won the right to vote in the South and started exercising some power, well, everybody freaked out. And all this anti-black feeling was immediately being fed. It's like, oh, the blacks are taking away your opportunities. You know, it's like, oh, I can't get into school because of the black students. I can't get a scholarship because of the blacks. It's all because of affirmative action. No, you know why you're poor and you're broke? Because the corporations in this country are sucking all the money up. It's not going to the black people. It's going to them. Now, talk about college. In 2011, this is also from Forbes. 34% of whites completed a four-year college education. 27% blacks did, and 13% of Hispanics. Wow, obviously, these blacks and these Hispanics are taking away college education from us poor white people. And in fact, I heard somewhere, but I don't have a fact here, that in that the way things are, that it is much easier to get a scholarship if you're white than if you're black, no matter what they tell you about affirmative action. And the fact is, according to Forbes, income inequality within the US has been increasing dramatically. Now, who's got your money? Who has got your money? I'm going to give you a few facts from Bernie Sanders' website. Now, you can say, oh, he's a socialist. He doesn't know what he's talking about. But Forbes has just told you the same thing, right? The top one-tenth of 1% 1 owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90%. Now, you tell me where you lie. Are you in that top one-tenth of 1%? 1 Are you on the bottom 90%? I know where I am. I I I'm in the bottom 90%. 
They've got the money, honey. The real, now dig this. The real median income of male workers is $783 less than it was 42 years ago. In other words, the wages of male workers has been going down. And the money hasn't gone to women. No, because the real median income of female workers is over $1,300 less than it was in 2007. You know why? Because we've been having trickle-down economics, like Ronald Reagan, who was supposed to be the great savior of the white working class, came in. Trickle-down the economics means that all the money went to the top, and we waited for it to rain. Well, there's a drought. And now I'm going to give you another fact that my husband dug up for me today. And I bet you know this from your own experience. Of the 13.4 million low-income families in the US with incomes less than 200% of the federal poverty level, and believe me, if you're at 200% of the federal poverty level, you are poor. 42% are white. So in our great nation, 42% of the poorest people are white. 30% are Hispanic, 22% are African American, and 6% are other non-whites. Now, who's got your money? See, this is no joke. We are being manipulated into turning against each other. When black people say they need more money or they need education, or they talk about discrimination, they are not kidding. Things are bad in the black community. That's why they're angry. And when white people feel defensive and want to protect their jobs and, and want scholarships for their kids, and they say they need money, guess what? White people aren't kidding either. But it's the Hispanics' fault. Listen to Donald Trump. It's all those undocumented Hispanics who've come over the border and who are working in the fields, and I know this, in jobs that nobody else wants anyway, and it's their fault. It's their fault that you don't have what you need. Look, I'm not a fool, and I don't understand why you are believing these lies. It makes me want to cry. When we are divided against each other, instead of going after the people on top who are manipulating us, and who have rigged the system for their benefit, and who are amassing billions and billions of dollars of wealth. And we're sitting and fighting each other for crumbs. You know, there's only one word for that. It's stupid. It's stupid that we're buying this. I'm talking to you from the bottom of my heart. We have got to start thinking straight. We have to stop listening to these people who are, you know, who are getting us to hate and fear one another when we are all in the same boat. It's the oldest trick in the book. I am sorry that you are so angry and feel so desperate that when you hear a guy like Donald Trump who has nothing to offer, but that he's going to fix everything, that he's a big guy, that you feel so powerless, that you're so desperate to have somebody say they're going to fix it, that you're going to vote for him, even though the guy is hurting all of us with what he's doing, dividing us from one another. And I have to say that, in general, the other Republican candidates are just as bad Look, I'm not telling you to vote for Bernie Sanders. I'm not telling you to vote for Hillary Clinton. I'm telling you to vote for yourself. I'm telling you to get your own information and don't get it from these people who are manipulating us into turning against each other. I'm asking the kids, these white student unions that are forming on the schools where the black are protesting, why don't you sit in the shoes of your black brothers and sisters for a while and see what their lives are like? Let's face the reality that there is so much more violence, police brutality against black, black people than white. There is much more discrimination. We're, we have it bad. 
They have it worse. What are we supposed to do, turn against them? No, please, I'm asking you to vote for Beth Green for president by thinking, by looking, by getting the facts by, from someplace objective, by not turning off this video, but let it seep into your heart. I am one of you. I was born in a white working class family in New York City. My father was a hardware salesman. He sold, uh, he was an outside rep. He would go from hardware store to hardware store and he would try to sell stuff. He wasn't a good salesman. He had a nervous breakdown. We didn't have anything. My mother went to work as a bookkeeper. We almost starved. I don't know how we made it except that we were a very cohesive family and we stuck together. If it weren't for free education, I would not have gotten a college degree. For education isn't free anymore, but if it weren't for free education, I would not have gotten a college degree. Neither of my parents went to college. As a matter of fact, neither of my parents had an academic diploma. But by the grace of New York City, I had a free education. And then with that great free education, I still didn't have any schools. And I worked as a typist, and I worked in the typing pool, and I was a secretary, and I worked in factories, and I worked uh, you know, in machine shops, and I lived in all kinds of places, and I know what the life is like. I want to say something in particular to our brothers and sisters in the coal country. I used to live in Ohio, and I knew a lot of people who came from the West Virginia area beautiful place. And they've got us so brainwashed that people who used to fight against the coal industry are fighting for the coal industry. Like, you really want your children to go and work in a coal mine? Come on. Dangerous, black lung disease, difficult working conditions. No, what you want for your children is what your parents wanted for you, which is a real opportunity. We've got to use the power of government to help our depressed areas, to bring everybody, black, white, Hispanic, together to, to uh, bring opportunity, uh, whether, you know, it cl the climate change is real, guys. Don't let them tell you it isn't. They want you to go fight for fracking. They want you to fight for coal. No, let's get together and start fighting for technology, for clean energy, for the things that we need to have a better life and to give a better life to our children. Let's stop the lies. Let's stop them here. This is Beth Green. I'm the old white grandma who's going to tell you the truth.